Let's take a look at portfolio performance and a decomposition proposed by Eugene Fama, the 2013 Nobel Prize winner in economics. And on the x-axis, we have beta, the systematic risk or the non-diversifiable risk. And on the y-axis, we have excess return or expected return. Now, what we have here is it turns out this is a portfolio that has systematic risk of beta A, and it has expected return of R bar A. Now you'll notice it plots above the security market line here, so you have, you've beaten the expected return. You've beaten what you should have gotten for that level of risk. And this difference between the expected return of A and the expected return of A prime, which is on the security market line, is actually Jensen's alpha. Now, rather than just look at that, what Fama does is he decomposes this. He says, look, these two portfolios have the same systematic or non-diversifiable risk, but they don't have the same total risk. Why is that? In order to get this higher expected return, the portfolio manager had to deviate from this market portfolio. Okay? He had to invest in some things, and this is not an efficient portfolio. It's not a combination of the risk-free asset and the market portfolio. So he decomposes that, and he says, look, let's take a look at a portfolio that has the same total risk, and that happens to be over here at A double prime. Now, you can actually solve for this mathematically. We're not going to do that here, but uh, it, can, it can easily be done. Now, it turns out that if this portfolio happens to be a small subset of a much larger portfolio that the investor holds, then it doesn't really matter because the other, the diversifiable risk will be diversified away. But if this is the entire portfolio, it does matter. So let's take a look at what we have here. Now, he looks at this portfolio here, A double prime, and he says, well, wait a minute. Okay, I didn't draw it here, but the difference between the return for A and the return for A double prime is what he calls net selectivity. That's the extra return you get given the extra total risk that you're taking. Then he looks at the part here from A double prime to A prime, that extra risk here is due to diversification or the fact that you're less diversified. You're taking on more total risk. He also does a second decomposition. And there are a lot of them you can do, but what he does here is he says, look, there's a target, let's say there's a target risk that the investor wants, and we call that beta T. So if the portfolio manager is taking on this target risk that the investor specifies, then given this security market line, he should get a return of R bar T. So the difference between R bar T and RF is the return from the investor's risk. It's the risk that the investor earns over the risk-free rate for being willing to take some, some risk rather than buying you know, treasury bills or some other risk-free asset. Now, the portfolio manager actually says, look, I'm not going to use this portfolio, this level of risk. I'm going to use this level of risk. So the difference between the return here at A prime, R bar A prime, and RT is a return from the manager's risk. So Let's, let's think about this. This total excess return, okay, the return you're earning over the risk-free rate has these de uh, different components. First, there's the return that the investor gets for the level of risk that he's willing to take. I get some. Then he gets, you get some extra return because the manager took on additional risk over what the investor wanted. So that's the difference between he, here and here. And then you get some extra return from selectivity, from the 
securities that the portfolio manager selected. If he had just chosen this level of risk and chosen a portfolio that was efficient or a combination of R, F, and M, he'd be right here, but he didn't. So he managed to pick some, some stocks that outperformed the market, okay, it caused the portfolio to do better. So that's what we call selectivity. But Fama breaks that selectivity into two parts. Net selectivity, that's the selectivity, the extra return you get over taking on um, this, a portfolio that has the same total level of risk and the extra return you get from diversification or the for that matter the lack of diversification the fact that you're taking on more risk so this is a good way to see how has the portfolio manager done this if it turned out that net selectivity was zero okay so this part were you know this this uh, a double prime and this line were right here Okay, so this was, there's no uh, space here. Then the portfolio manager is simply earning extra return by using less diversification and taking on more risk. So it's a, it's a perhaps a better way to look at return or excess return than simply using Jensen's Alpha. It's a way to evaluate what has the manager done based on how much diversification he has uh, taken on or how much less diversification he's taken on, okay? How much extra risk he's taken over what the investor targeted, but more importantly, how much of this selectivity from selecting stocks comes from picking good stocks, okay? That, that uh, a portfolio that has a higher return than um, a naive portfolio with the same total risk and how much he outperforms uh, or how much this performance is based on reducing the diversification of the portfolio. So this is a, a perhaps a better way to look at how a fund manager is performed. If his net selectivity were zero, then you know the fund manager is not adding any great value. So that would be the case where perhaps it's not worth it to have this fund manager do do this for you. But if the bigger the net selectivity is relative to the diversification, uh, the more value the fund manager is adding.